Hi there, this is Snola. In this video we're going to look at RAID 5. First of all, how does RAID 5 work? You need at least three hard drives to set up a RAID 5 array. And what happens inside the array is that the RAID controller will stripe uh, the drives together, like in RAID 0, but it will also add something called parity. Uh, parity is uh, the end result of a comparison between uh, sets of data written, written to different drives. I'm going to show you in my example. It's going to be hopefully going to be uh, understandable, but um, we'll see about that. Uh, the advantages of RAID 5 is that you have increased read speed and that you have also redundancy. And the disadvantages of RAID 5 is capacity yield. In my example here there are three hard drives and all three of them are one terabyte. And with RAID 0 you would have a, a three terabyte virtual hard drive. With RAID 5 you will lose uh, the capacity of one drive. So in this case we have a RAID controller and what it presents to the operating system is a drive of two terabytes. When we take a close look at what happens when the operating system is trying to write some bits of data to the disk drives, what the RAID controller will do is take the first half of the eight bits and write it to hard drive number one. It will take the second half of the eight bits and write it to hard drive number two. Keep in mind this is simplified because it writes in much, much bigger chunks of data, but this is just to simplify how it works. Uh, as we see now, there's no difference from what happened in RAID 0. We took half of the, the data and wrote, wrote it to uh, two hard drives and we still have a third hard drive and why do we need it? It's uh, because of the parity and when the RAID controller creates the parity bits it uses a table uh, called exclusive OR and it, it will compare bits and will output a parity bit uh, as a result of the bits it compares and we're gonna try to see how it works. In this case you see that hard drive number one has half of the data we got from the operating system and the first bit is a one. And hard drive number two has the second half of the data and the first bit is one. And according to the table marked in yellow here, uh, one plus one equals zero. So on hard drive number three the first parity bit will be a zero. When we go to the second bit, we see that hard drive number one, the second bit is zero, and hard drive number two, the second bit is zero. So, according to the table, the second parity bit is then a zero. Uh, we go to the third bit, hard drive number one, the third bit is one, hard drive number two, the third bit is one, and according to the table, one plus one is a parity bit of zero. So that's what gets written to num hard drive number three. And we have a fourth bit, zero and zero, and according to the table, that's a zero. Now we have written, the, the RAID controller has calculated the parity bits and written them to hard drive number three. This, of course, takes a little bit of time, so uh, you will not have the uh, right performance that uh, RAID 0 has. We have a second set of data here. Let's go through that. First half gets written to disk number 1, second half gets written to disk number 3. And why is it written to disk number 3? That is because RAID 5 will spread the parity bits evenly between the drives. And why it does that is because when you have a hard drive failure that will increase your uh, performance. 
I will take a look at that a little bit later. And uh, once again, the RAID controller will calculate the parity bits. First half of the, of the data is on hard drive number one. That's the first bit is uh, zero. And on hard drive number three, there's the second half of the data we got from the operating system. And that the first bit there is uh, one. And according to the table, zero plus one equals a parity bit of one. Second bit, one on each side, that will create a parity bit of zero. And the third bit, also one on each side, and that will create a parity bit of zero. And the last bit of the data, uh, zero on hard drive number one, and one uh, on hard drive number three. And according to the table, zero plus one equals one. Now we generated the parity bits for the second set of data. And this will just keep going. Uh, the RAID control would do this all the time. It will move the data from the operating system, the memory, to the disk drives. It will calculate the parity bits and it will distribute it uh, evenly between the drives. Um, what happens if a drive fails? Of course, all the data on the, the drive that fails will be lost. Would that mean that you, the operating system will see that um, the drive is gone? Will the data be lost? No, it won't. Uh, in the, as we'll see here, the RAID controller, if the operating system tries to access the first piece of data here, it will. Uh, the RAID controller will take the first half give it to the operating system and take the second half and give it to the operating system so the data is intact. While on the second line here uh, the first half of the data is intact but the second half is gone because the hard drive number three died. But we still have the parity bits. And do you see the operating system here it now gets the first four bits because they are intact and the RAID controller will pull up its um, exclusive OR table and it will compare the bits of the original data and the parity bits. As you see here the first bit on hard drive number one is a zero and the first parity bit on hard drive number two is a one and in the table you can see that that leaves us only with one option that the original data on hard drive num number three must have been uh, one. And second bit, one on hard drive number one, and uh, the parity bit is zero. That leaves us with only one option. The original data on hard drive number three must have been a one. And third bit, one, parity bit, zero. That leaves us with one option. The original data must have been one. And the fourth bit, zero and the parity bit is one that leaves us with one option and that would see is mean that uh, the original data on hard drive number three was a one and when you read each uh, uh, set of data the rate controller will calculate what the original data on the defective drive what the data was so you will be able to access and read all the files even if a drive fails and when you replace the drive the RAID controller will either automatically depending on its price actually or you can start it manually if you have a crappy one it will rebuild uh, the third drive it will take the data from the from the hard drives that are still alive and write it to the hard drive number and the new hard drive. As you can see here, uh, it, it won't, <laughs> oh my bad, it won't write the data, it will create parity bits in this first case here. And uh, when it compares with the table here, you see that one plus one, you have the first bit on hard drive number one and the second bit on hard drive number two. 1 and 1, according to the table, will give 0, and a 0 and a 0 will give 0, 
and a 1 and a 1 will give 0 and a 0 and a 0 will give a 0. It will rebuild the original data based on the first half and the parity bits and as you can see it will rebuild the entire content of hard drive 3 as if it was never gone. And there you go, you have rebuilt your RAID array.